Hello and welcome everybody. Today in Algebra 2, uh, we are going to look at the properties of exponents. So uh, this is a section that was, I guess, learned back in Algebra 1. But, you know, just as a refresher, this is, uh, you know, what this is for right here. So previously in Algebra 1, uh, these are all the properties that you have learned. So uh, just kind of going down the list so hopefully you guys can remember. If you have x to the a multiplied by x to the b, that's supposed to be equal to x to the a plus b. So meaning that if you have uh, two things things that are multiplied by each other uh, and they have the same base, uh, then that means that the exponents can just be added together. So for example, x to the third times x to the seventh would then be equal to x to the tenth. The next one after that is going to be x to the a divided by x to the b is equal to x to the a minus b. So for example, x to the seventh uh, divided by x to the third would then be equal to x to the fourth. So you can just go ahead and subtract the exponents then. Uh, going down the list a little bit more, um, if you have x to the a raised to the power of b, then that's the same thing as x to the a times b. Uh, so uh, kind of like if you have like an exponent with an exponent outside, then the result is that you just multiply the two together. So uh, the example for that one may be something like x to the third. If you have that raised to the seventh power, then the result is that this is equal to x to the three times seven, uh, which is the same thing as x to the 21. Uh, keep going down. Uh, if you have x to the a, uh, sorry, x times y to the a power uh, inside the same base, then you can go ahead and distribute the exponents. So it's x to the a times y to the a. And finally, uh, in the same manner, if you have x divided by y inside as the base, uh, all raised to the a power, that is equal to x to the a divided by y to the a. So we'll go ahead and use some of these properties. So then that way you can see how that actually works out. Uh, just as, uh, you know, kind of a refresher then. So here are some examples of that. Uh, let's say the following in the first one. I want to simplify this expression that's over here that looks pretty nasty. Well, uh, the way we're going to go about it is just, as we said, using these uh, properties. And uh, we'll go ahead and kind of, you know, think about it using the order of operation. We'll deal with what's on the outside uh, and then from the inside. So in the first part, I noticed that the whole thing is raised to the third power. So then that means that we can go ahead and use uh, the property uh, that is over here, this one over here, where we can just distribute the exponent to each part. And in fact, we can do that for both parts of those. So in the inside, we're going to have a raised to the power of 10 uh, to the third and then divided by b squared raised to the third power. And then for the next part is a to the fourth divided by b to the third power raised to the fourth. And some of you guys might already see that uh, you can go you know, one step further and do it all like in one step and rather than two steps here. This will then be a to the 30th divided by b to the sixth multiplied by a to the fourth and then all that divided by b to the 12th. Now that you're at that point where everything is simplified with the uh, parentheses, we can go ahead and use the regular properties, uh, the one where we go ahead and add the exponents, assuming that the bases are the same. So the top part, we have a raised to the power of 34 because it's 30 plus 4, whereas the bottom part will have b raised to the power of 18 because of 6 plus 12. Uh, for the second part over here on the right hand side, we'll go ahead and do the same thing, applying to the parts that are going to be common, uh, combining the like terms. So the first part, I see 4 divided by 2 right here, which is going to be simply equal to 2. So that's the easy part. Now for this guy right here, you don't actually need to put in a calculator because again, notice that they both have the same base. So what that means is since we have a division, we can go ahead and just subtract the exponents. So that's two times seven raised to the power of 100 minus 98. And if we clean that up, that's two multiplied by seven squared. And we can go a little bit further. That's two times 49. And so the answer is equal to 98 then, okay? All right, so that's the easy part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and expand upon that to provide some more exponential rules so we can go ahead and, you know, do hard problems that are a little bit harder. So the first one right here, we have x to the zero, and I want to know what that actually simplifies out to be. Well, to give you an example as to how do we solve for this, uh, if we have x to the third divided by x to the third, according to our properties, then this is the same thing as x to the three minus three, which is equal to x to the zero. But then on the left hand side, we can say that, hey, if you have something on the top that's the same as what's on the bottom, they should cancel each other out. So all that's left with is one. So x to the zero is then equal to one then. 
Moving along to the right hand side now, uh, x to the power of negative 1, uh, using that property of the negative exponents, uh, if we have something like say x to the negative 3, the way I can think about it is that this is going to be uh, x to the 0 minus 3. And if we rewrite this uh, out as a division, that's going to be x to the 0 divided by x to the third power. So x to the 0, that's equal to 1 as we just proved. So this is equal to x to the third. So in conclusion, then x to the negative 1 is going to provide a fraction where the fraction is going to be 1 over x to the n. So that is going to be our second part. Now the third part right here, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, wait, wait, hold on. It's just going to be x, uh, 1 over x. There's no n in there. Uh, I just kind of like, you know, added that n in there by accident. And I think I kind of jumped the gun because that actually solves for the next one over here. So if you use the same idea, uh, x to the negative n, uh, I can look at that as x to the negative 1 raised to the nth power. And so that's where I got that answer from earlier, because this is then equal to 1 over x raised to the nth power. And that we can distribute to 1 to the n divided by x to the n, which in short is the same thing as 1 over x to the n then. Now, uh, for something a little bit more complex, what if we have x to the 1 over n? Uh, what is that then equal to? So here, let's go ahead and use kind of like something to kind of help you see how that actually works out. Um, if we have uh, maybe like say x raised to the power of one half, uh, the question is, uh, what is that the same thing as? Well, uh, it turns out that, well, actually, this is not turns out, but this is actually by definition. By definition, this is the same thing as the square root of x. And if you're wondering, okay, well, why is it that, uh, why is it that the case? Uh, the answer is, well, if I take this right here equation and I'm going to uh, square both sides like this, then you can see that on the right-hand side, the square root and the square supposedly are going to cancel each other out because they're inverses of each other. So that gives me of x. And on the left-hand side, you can see x to the power of 1 half uh, and then raised to the second power, the 1 half times 2 will then give you x to the first power. So that's the reason why that actually works out. So in our case over here, uh, the way that we say it by definition in this one, and I really should uh, give, give it a different color because this is not a proof right here, x to the 1 over n, that is supposed to be the same, the same thing, uh, the, the nth root right there uh, is supposed to be the nth root of x then. So that's going to be our formal definition. Uh, and then using that formal definition to expand upon what we need to solve for, x to the power of a divided by n, um, well, first I can go ahead and split that up to be the following, x to the power of 1 over n, and then that raised to the a power, and that in uh, x to the, uh, actually, hold on, hold on, let me go ahead and reverse this because it might be a little bit easier to see. Uh, let me change that so that it's x to the a power, and then raised to the power of 1 over n. So if we look at it that way, then that is going to be saying the same thing as the nth root of x to the a. So that is going to be our conclusion. If I wrote it the other way around, like x to the 1 over n and then raised to the a power, uh, you would have had the same answer, but it's just you know a little bit harder to kind of like see them. Okay. All right. So there you go. Those are going to be kind of like our new properties. And now let's go ahead and use them uh, on the following over here then. Okay. So what I want to do now is simplify the following using the new properties that we just picked up. Um, so the first one is going to be 7 times x to the negative 3 times 8 times x to the ninth power. So just like before, what we'll do is we'll combine the like terms. So 7 times 8, that is going to give you 56. Multiply by x raised to the power of, because these two are the same bases, then I can just go ahead and add the exponents. Negative 3 plus 9, that's going to give you 6. So that right there, 56 times x to the 6 is going to be our answer. For the next portion, same idea as kind of like above over here. Uh, the problem that we did over here where we have like say an exponent on the outside, we're going to have to distribute inside into each one of those exponents then. So first using the distributive property because uh, we have an exponent, uh, we have to deal with the parentheses. So we have 5 to the 4th multiplied by a raised to the power of uh, a cubed uh, raised to the fourth, which is the same thing as saying three times four. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit faster and say a to the 12th. Next, multiply by b raised to the power of negative two times four. That's going to be negative eight. And then times for the other part, that is five to the negative half, uh, sorry, negative two, because you can think of five as having an exponent of one just by itself, times a raised to the eighth power multiplied by b raised to the 10th power. 
Once we have this part, now it looks like the previous problem where we can just combine your like term. Uh, the five base, uh, we have five to the fourth uh, times five to the negative two. So four minus two, that is going to be five square. Multiply by uh, a to the 12 times a to the eighth. So that's a total of a to the 20th. And then b, uh, that is going to be negative eight uh, plus 10. So that's going to be equal to two. And so we can go ahead and leave your answer like this. Or if you want, you can go ahead and multiply out the five squared to be 25 and either one should be okay. Okay, uh, a couple more over here. Um, for this problem, uh, we will go ahead and uh, deal with the negative exponent. So that's the first thing we would do. Now, for the negative exponent, there's a trick to it because uh, we can write them as fractions uh, according to this property that's over here, like one over those numbers. But I think it's probably best uh, if I actually just put them in the opposite part of the fraction where they're supposed to be. So, for example, the r to the negative fifth, why don't I just go ahead and write that as r to the fifth in the denominator? Similarly, we have t to the negative 3, so I'll go ahead and write t to the third in the denominator. Now, the r to the negative 1, we can go ahead and do the same thing, but we'll just go ahead and put it in the top because the reciprocal of the reciprocal is just the same thing as putting as a multiplying. So that's going to be r on the top. And finally, we have t squared, so we'll just go ahead and leave that on the bottom. And now we can go ahead and clean up as much as we can then. So we have r on the top, r to the fifth on the bottom, so I see r to the fourth. Multiply by the bottom part, we have t to the fifth power because uh, t to the cube uh, times t squared, you just add the exponents then. Okay, so final question over here. Uh, now, for the last one, we're going to deal with the root of the sixth power. So, this, if it helps you, why don't we rewrite it according to our definition? m to the 60th power times b to the 12th power raised to the power of 1 6. So, that's going to be our formal definition then. And in doing so, you can see now that you're going to multiply the 1, 6 into each exponent. So that's m raised to the power of 6 divided by 6. That's going to be 10. Multiplied by b raised to the power of 12 divided by 6, which is going to be uh, 2. So that's squared. So there's your final answer then. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.